Welcome back everyone, Houston Math Prep here. Let's say we have some vector w. Here I've chosen the vector 1, 2, 3 to be my w just as a for instance. And we ask the question, how many parallel directions are there to my vector w? If we think for a minute, we might come up with 2. One of the directions is pointing exactly the same direction as vector w. We could have lots of different vectors that point in this direction with all different lengths, right? Here you can see these vectors I've listed are all just positive multiples of our vector w here, right? This one's two times vector w, this one is three times vector w, this one's 10 times vector w. There are many more. I've just listed a couple to give you an idea. These all point in the same direction, the exact same direction as vector w. There's another parallel direction, and that's the direction that's exactly opposite of w, in other words 180 degrees from w. I've listed some of those vectors that fit this pattern. We can tell by looking at these I think that these are all negative multiples of vector w. This is negative 1 times vector w, negative 2 times vector w. This bottom one here is negative 5 times vector w. So they are of course all different lengths but all point in the exact opposite direction as w does in 3D space. Now let's sort of orient our minds a little differently and think about how many orthogonal directions there are to our vector w. Remember orthogonal just being the vector word for perpendicular. It turns out there are a lot. So many in fact that we can't count them all. We have infinitely many directions that are orthogonal to our vector w. When we say infinitely many that doesn't mean that every vector is orthogonal to w certainly. So what is the pattern, let's say, for a vector to be orthogonal to our vector w here? It turns out that these vectors will all lie in the same plane. And it's the plane that vector w is sticking out of at a 90 degree angle. In other words, vector w is orthogonal to this plane here, and any vector lying completely in that plane will be orthogonal to w. If you remember another type of product, in our video series right before this, the dot product, we know then that all these vectors in the plane will have a dot product of zero with our vector w, because when two vectors are orthogonal, their dot product is equal to zero. So to sort of make this easier to see, let's just pick two of our vectors we've sort of drawn here in the plane. We had a lot of them. We've just chosen two. And consider them with a w. We'll call them u and v here. So if u and v are in this plane, and so they're orthogonal to w, then that means that both u dot w is equal to zero, and v dot w is equal to zero. And here I've also listed out the way we find a dot product and said that that's equal to zero. So if we attempt to solve these two equations to figure out what we'd get for vector w based on vectors u and v, so we would use maybe elimination or substitution on this system of equations. We're not going to show all the algebra steps to do that here. It would take too long. But we end up with these expressions for the components of vector w, our orthogonal vector to u and v here. If we use these answers for w1, w2, and w3 to write the formula for w, our perpendicular vector, and we'll write it here in the standard unit vector notation for a change instead of the bracket notation, then we get this big long expression for w. We get the quantity u2v3 minus u3v2 times i hat minus the quantity u1v3 minus u3v1 j hat plus the quantity u1v2 minus u2v1 times k hat. And that's a lot, right? And so this is our formula for a vector that's orthogonal to both vectors u and v here. So this way of multiplying components of u and v together to get a third vector that's orthogonal to both of the original two, that's the idea of a cross product. So here our vector w is the cross product of vectors u and v. If you recall the dot product of two vectors gives us a scalar, right, a real number, and here you can see the cross product of two vectors is going to give us another vector. So two different ways of multiplying vectors and we get two entirely different types of objects as a result. So the cross product of two vectors gives us a vector that's orthogonal to the plane 
that contains both of those vectors, as I've shown here. And it turns out there isn't just one possibility with cross product. So let's introduce another geometric concept here with our cross product. Cross products are calculated based on the same right-hand rule that we use to assign our axes in three-dimensional space. So if I take u cross v, as I have here, that means if I set my right hand along u so that my fingers are able to curl in the direction of v, then the cross product u cross v will point in the direction that my right hand thumb would be facing at that point, which is this direction if they're oriented this way over here. If I calculate the cross product v cross u, then my right hand rule says if I orient my right hand along the first vector v so that my right hand fingers could curl in the direction of u, then my thumb would tell the direction that v cross u points. So in this picture on the right hand side, in order for my right hand fingers to curl from v toward u, I would have to turn my arm so that my thumb was facing downward. So I think you can see from this that finding u cross v will give us a vector that points orthogonally out of the plane one direction, while v cross u gives us a vector that points directly out of the plane in the other direction. Okay, so let's go back to calculating u cross v. Here we've got this big long expression that we wrote down before, and it's possible that this kind of expression might look familiar to you. And if it doesn't, that's completely okay. This is long and complicated here. It turns out that this expression we have for u cross v is exactly what we'd get by calculating what's called the determinant of a square matrix. And in this case, it'd be the determinant of the matrix with our standard unit vectors, i hat, j hat, k hat, in the first row, and then placing vectors u and v, their components, in the remaining rows, making sure to place them in our square matrix in the same order that we're calculating our cross product. So u cross v, then vector u goes in our square matrix before vector v. If we're doing v cross u, we'd put vector v in the second row and vector u in the last row. There's a couple of ways to organize calculating the determinant of a 3 by 3 matrix, but we'll briefly review the way that we'll be using in our video series here. If you have another way that you already feel comfortable finding a determinant, that's great. Use that. So the way we'll show you a short way to see this big long expression without having to memorize this is a procedure basically called a Laplace expansion. What we're going to do with this, without going to too much linear algebra for just this finding determinant, if we haven't seen this before. So if I go from left to right across my first row in the matrix, what I'll do is I'll take my i hat entry, and I'm going to multiply i hat. If I cross out the row and column i hat is in, I'm going to multiply it by the determinant that I have with the remaining four entries that are not crossed out. So i hat is going to multiply by the determinant of u2, u3, v2, v3, those entries. Moving on to the next entry in the first row, we're going to expand off of j hat. Now as we move across this first row, we need to change signs each time we get to a new term. So instead of plus j hat, we're actually going to say minus j hat here. And j hat will multiply by the entries we have left if we cross out the row and column that j hat is in you'll see we have u1 u3 and v1 v3 so we'll go ahead and multiply j hat by those entries u1 u3 v1 v3 the determinant of that two by two matrix our final entry is k hat so last one was minus this one will be plus k hat mark out the row and column that k hat is in. You'll see we have u1, u2, and v1, v2 as our leftover entries. So k hat times the determinant of those items there, u1, u2, and v1, v2. And once we get to this point, if we know how to do a two by two determinant, that's really this main diagonal from top left to bottom right, minus the other diagonal we have from top right to bottom left. So if we now expand this in sort of a crisscross motion, right? If you've done this before with two by two determinants, then you'll see we get i hat times u2 v3 
minus, if we take now this diagonal, that will be v2 u3. And you can see we start to get this formula so we don't have to memorize it if we kind of understand how to work through this expansion here. So we'll have minus j hat, and then our next determinant, top left to bottom right, is u1 v3 minus what's in our other diagonal, which is v1 u3, multiplying those, plus k hat, and then our two by two determinant k hat is multiplied by our diagonal here, u1 v2, minus the other diagonal, v1 u2. And you can see what we've got here is now this long expression by just simply expanding the first row and taking each of those entries in that row times it's what we call kind of a minor matrix here. Those leftover two by two entries. We'll go ahead and work through a couple of examples for you. So we're given that the vector u is 2, negative 1, 1, and vector v is 0, 2, 1. And we're being asked to find u cross v. So what we'll set this up as u cross v. I'll set this up as a determinant. Sometimes we'll write DET outside of a matrix. And as you saw, I think before I was doing, if we use straight line brackets, it might look like a very tall absolute value bracket, but that actually tells us we're taking the determinant of the matrix that we're gonna write. So remember my first row is gonna be I hat, J hat, K hat, and try to leave yourself enough room to write all your entries and also keep them in straight rows and columns. So since it's u cross v, u needs to go first. So I write 2, negative 1, 1, and v is last. So 0, 2, 1 goes in my final row here. And now remember how we expand this, right? So if we expand this first row, then we'll go ahead and take i hat. I will write down i hat times what's left over once we cross out the row and column that i hat is in the determinant of that matrix so i hat times the determinant negative one one two one remember when we go on to our j hat term this was a positive so now we say minus j hat alternating signs here j hat times if we cross the row and column out that j hat is in we're left with the four entries 2, 1, 0, 1, keeping those in the same positions, 2, 1, 0, 1. So it'll be j hat times that determinant, plus, our last one was minus, so this one is plus k hat. If we mark out the row and column k hat is in, we're left with the four entries 2, negative 1, 0, 2. We have 2, negative 1, 0, 2, so k hat will multiply by that, 2 by 2 determinant. And now we just need to remember the diagonals and multiplying those. So we have i hat times negative 1 times 1 would be negative 1 minus the other diagonal. So minus 2 times 1 would be 2 here. Minus j hat. We do our next determinant here. 2 times 1 would be 2 always minus the other diagonal, zero times one would be zero there, plus k hat times our determinant here, two times two on this diagonal would be four, minus the other diagonal, zero times negative one would be zero. And now we just simplify what's in parentheses, right? So here we would actually get negative three, so we'd get negative three i hat, minus j hat times two would be minus two j hat. And then k hat times four would be plus four k hat. Okay, so this is our vector u cross v. This vector is perpendicular to u and perpendicular to v. It is perpendicular to the plane that contains both u and v. So very similar, we have the, I'm using the same vectors in this next example, but I'm just doing the opposite product, right? So I'm doing V cross U instead of U cross V. So the idea here is we'll still have a determinant. It will be a three by three determinant. It'll still start with I hat, J hat, and K hat. And because it's V cross U, V will go in first, so it'll be zero, two, one in the second row, and the third row will be our two, negative one, one. 
So doing our same expansion, just getting you used to this here. So I hat, crossing out the row and column that I hat is in. We have two, one, negative one, one as our leftover four entries. So times the determinant two, one, negative one, one. Remember our j hat is always minus j hat. Marking out the row and column j hat is in. Our leftover entries are 0, 1, 2, 1. So minus j hat times the determinant 0, 1, 2, 1 plus k hat. And if we mark out the row and column k hat is in, we have 0, 2, 2, negative 1. We'll have times the determinant 0, 2, 2, negative 1. Okay, so if we go ahead and do our 2 by 2s, we'll have i hat times this diagonal, 2 times 1 would be 2, minus negative 1 times 1 would be negative 1, so minus negative 1 would be like plus 1 there, minus j hat times this determinant, 0, times 1 would be 0, minus the other diagonal here, 2 times 1 would be 2, plus k hat, times our diagonal, 0 times negative 1 would give us 0, minus 2 times 2 gives us 4, and if we do some simplifying here, we'll actually get 3 i hat, minus j hat times negative 2 would give us plus 2 j hat, and then negative 4 here, so we'd have minus 4 k hat. All right, and this is our vector v cross u. And what you'll probably notice, because we did these in the opposite order, we have really the vector that is 3, 2, negative 4 here. That's our v cross w. If I go back to the last one, you notice what we have here is negative 3, negative 2, and positive Four. So we actually, these vectors are actually pointing in the exact opposite direction, right? They're actually the same length as well. They just point out of that same plane, exact opposite directions, and they're the same length. All right, everybody, that's your introduction to cross products with us. Thanks for watching. We've got some applications of cross products coming up in the next couple of videos. Thanks for watching. We'll see you then.